Okay, welcome into the Skoda Octavia VRS. We are here in Vienna at the international launch of, I suppose, the facelift version of this. And as well as that, we're having a brief look at the Octavia Scout as well. It's just like the Octavia, really. What we've got is kind of a nicer grille to the front, as well as that, is it crystallized or diamondized or something like that LED lights to the front which is always good folks visibility is a major factor of the roads at the moment we need to be more visible than all the rest but that's not what the RS is all about that's not what the VRS is all about it's about some of this noise it's about the reason why I'm talking really loudly at the moment is that grunt that that's burble it's everything else that comes with the car it's so nice Unfortunately, folks, some of it is fake, but you're able to turn that off, apparently. Personally, I like it. I don't mind a bit of fake burble. I've said it before when I was driving a 2.3 litre Ford Mustang. You know, a bit of fake noise is all right every now and then. Now, if you ever do get your hands on a VRS, I advise you to take it to track. I advise you to take a track when it's wet. You'll actually get to see what this does. There's an electronic diff inside here, and as well as that, the steering is kind of adaptive, which is perfect. I am by no means a race driver, I'm, I'm not great at racing, I'm the first to admit it, no problem at all, right? We did slaloms and everything else like that, I'm not bad. But when you're driving the Octavia with all the safety systems in place, it is very hard to actually completely come off track, to actually completely lose control. 610 litre boot if you go for the uh, combi which we're sitting in at the moment or 590 or something ridiculously big like that inside the hatch version it's got your fun it's got your nice drive but as well as that it's got your practicality and if you drive it properly don't turn on that vrs mode and drive an eco or in comfort you're actually going to return a good fuel economy as well if you're into the RS, you know what it can offer. It's plenty of fun at an affordable price. It's cheaper than the Golf GTI, and it's just as fun. Okay, next up we have the Skoda Octavia Scout. Now this is one that has surprised me. I have driven this car a few times before. Engines haven't really changed, 150 brake horsepower. I think there's 185 or 184 brake horsepower available as well. Usually when we go to a launch and we're testing off-road capabilities, and I'm gonna use the, let's say, the Vitara, Suzuki Vitara as an example, which is a great car, by the way, I'm not giving out about it, right? But when they bring us to an off-road place to test it, it's always kind of lower level stuff, right? So effectively what they're saying is, on an icy day or a snowy day, this will get you up a mountain. It will get you through fields that are full of turd. Whatever it is, it will get you through it. Now an Octavia Scout, which is raised 30 mils higher than a normal Octavia, or 45 mils higher than this VRS because they're 15 mils lower, right? It's surprisingly good. And if you do happen to live up a mountain that's snowy or wet or mucky or grassy or whatever it is, it'll do the job for you. Now, if you don't, and I know the guys in Skoda won't be too happy about this, ignore it, is what I'd say to you. What I'd say to you is if you want an Octavia and if you want a combi version of it, go for the normal Octavia if you're not living up a mountain. Ask the dealership to bring you to a four-wheel drive course. There's a challenge for the dealers out there. Will you do that for your customer? I am begging you to do that for your customer. Show them what it's really about, what it's really like. Now the Scout itself is going to be available from in around 35 and a half thousand euro. Of course there are other cars that you can look at as well. If you're a golf person you can offer a golf which you're going to get plenty of the same stuff inside it. The Golf Estate's a nice car but you're not going to get that space that you get with Octavia. And I've always said it about the Superb as well. Excellent space available within those vehicles. Legroom to the back of all the models that we test today is absolutely brilliant. In terms of the interior comfort, the nice stitching on the VRS uh, steering wheel here, and same in the Scout as well, it's really nicely laid out. There's not many cheap materials on the dash or anything like that. This 9.2 or 9.5 inch display is really, really nice. A lot of people complaining about the lack of buttons, but you know, that's where everyone's going with these. As well as that, you've got a small, I think it's about five inch uh, TFT display here in the center of the, the driver's binnacle. Yes, you get USB AUX connectivity and you also get a 12 volt charger here in the center. But if I was going for this person, I'd go down the route of the DSG gearbox. Um, I think they're marvelous fun. 
So now I've got the spec sheet here in front of me, so I'm going to call out a few prices. Octavia RS TDI 184 brake horsepower starting from €34,450. The RS 2 litre TDI with 184 brake horsepower, this is for the Combi, €35,450, only €1,000 more for the uh, Combi version. Uh, prices aren't here for the TSI and the reason being, as I said, that's going to be replaced in the near future. Okay folks, you are watching the Car Buyer's Guide YouTube channel. If you'd like to subscribe, there is a little button over there. Please press it. As well as that, have a look at the various links around the screen and throughout this video piece itself as well, we would have added in cards to written reviews and things like that too. We'll see you again very soon. Not sure